is Dr. Ravindra Sabnis. He is a star of Indian urology. He has held several past positions in our urological societies, and he does a lot, a lot to all the fellow urologists in India as well as abroad. He has really a golden heart. He was a council member of West Zone of USI. He was honorary secretary of West Zone. He was president of West Zone. He was board member of Board of Education of Urological Society of India. Then he became chairman of Board of Education. Then he came as a council member to our main Urological Society of India. And then for four years, he was honorary secretary of USI. He has more than 100 publications to his credit, nine book chapters and one full book. He has uh, delivered more than 200 lectures, orations in symposia. He has more than 50 live surgery demonstrations. And I'm happy to tell you, he has been a part of Percon every year for demonstration of live surgery in PCNL workshops. He has won the best paper publication award by British Journal of Urology International in 2014, Best Teacher Award by National Board of Examination for year 2018, Best Expert Review Award by SIU for the year 2018, and Global Leadership Award by AUA for year 2019. I have real pleasure to introduce you here and I invite Dr. Ravindra Sabnis to share his slides and tell us about the miniaturization and how small should we be. Over to Dr. Sabnis, sir. Amazing, sir. Amazing CV. Thank you, Dr. Paul, for that uh, very kind introduction. And as you said very rightly, that this is a time for us to really um, uh, take the overview as to how small can we go and whether it is really required, what are the problems, what are the benefits, and I'm going to give you a very realistic audit from, the, from that point of view. Well, as you know, that PCNL was invented almost 40 years back, but still there is a fear to perform PCNL. Dr. Paul has uh, traveled all across the India, all across the world, teaching people how to do PCNL, demonstrating to their own country and uh, demonstrating how to do PCNL. But still, when he conducts uh, the PERCON, there are 800, 900 new people still wish to come and understand how exactly PCNL to be done. So that is what is the fear of uh, people in the mind of doing PCNL because there is a potentiality of complication. Even after doing 1000 PCNL, uh, 1000 first PCNL can have major complication and that's a fear people, uh, that's a fear in people's mind. Western world is moving away from PCNL. There is no doubt about it. We have been seeing, we have been observing, we have been seeing in the publication also uh, that they are going away from PCNL. And as we know that uh, the incidence of staghorn and a large stone, which we used to see about 10, 15 years back is really going down. So these are the facts which we need to understand. And that is how we discuss about the miniaturization of PCNL. <laughs> Now, if you see all the complications of PCNL, bleeding, perforation, all these complications, they all can be attributed to the tract size. Now, that is the fact which we have to understand, we have to accept, we have to digest. And this also is reiterated by the uh, Cruz data study uh, of the 5,000 patients across the continents, across the countries. And what they have found out that the sheet size was the predictive of bleeding complication. And bleeding complication is the one which uh, everybody is uh, worried about. Now, with this background, when the uh, mini park arrived almost in year 1997, uh, first uh, mini park in children was introduced. But the 2000 was the year where actually dedicated a new design of mini park was introduced by stores which was designed by uh, Negle and uh, by Wolf, by Steve Lame. Lame is uh, with us. Uh, uh, he is the one who is uh, the main uh, man behind designing the uh, mini PCNL uh, manufactured by Wolf. And this is what is the mini PCNL. All of us, uh, we know this. These are the set of instruments. And this is a 12 French uh, uh, nephroscope, which is the heart of the mini PCNL. 
the beauty of mini pcnl as we know is there is no difference in the procedure the we are all used to do uh, the standard pcnl and when you shift to mini pcnl the steps are almost the same that you achieve the puncture you put the uh, wire you put the uh, dilators now the difference is that here since the tract size is uh, between 15 to 20 15 to 18 there are there is usually a single step dilatation so what we do is just a two step dilatation once you put a wire you put a screw dilator dilate it up to 14 and then whether it is 15 16 or 18 uh, you put a dilator uh, directly and the uh, put the uh, sheet size on that so that uh, is actually the same and once you put the nephroscope see the stone and then you start breaking now whether to break uh, with the laser with the lithoclasis you uh, is the uh, the urologist choice we have done a study and we have shown that there is absolutely no difference in any way about uh, using the laser or the lithoclasis so whichever uh, the urologist familiar to it can break the stone and uh, the stones actually come out with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the vacuum cleaner effect everybody has shown it everybody has experienced it and we don't have uh, initially we were wondering how these stones actually come out but it is a fact that these stones they come out by the side of the for the sheet and the uh, once you do mini pcnl once you confirm that everything is fine uh the it would be a, a tubeless pcnl so obviously mini perk was suitable and meant for small stones less than 2 cm size but when we talk of a realistic audit where we stand today in miniaturization we not only have to compare the mini pcnl with the standard pcnl but we also have to compare it with the different other modalities which are prevalent now this is the comparison which we ourselves did it there are so many papers in the uh, in the literature about the standard versus mini and what we found is that in the uh, in the uh, mini pcnl you tend to do more of a tubeless pcnl uh, the uh, the clearance is almost the same but what is more important is that mean hemoglobin drop is less in mini pcnl the analgesic requirement is less and the uh, and the uh, hospital says definitely less when we compare to a uh, mini pcn to rirs the or time in rirs is definitely very high so that's a minus point for rirs clearance more or less is almost the same uh, in rirs but the, what is important is that in rirs you end up in putting double just strain almost all patients 86% in our series had double just strain whereas in mini pcnl is hardly any uh, requirement of putting double just strain the pain score is more in pcnl but that we found out that it is more only for first 24 hours after that it is almost same but very important fact that all the patients who were not having dj they were relieved of the dj related symptoms which we tend to ignore so with this uh, the feasibility of uh, mini perk opened a new door and uh, a new era of miniaturized pcnl and once we found out and once we it was realized that mini pcnl is has lots of advantages then quest to reduce the size further continued and then there was era of uh, so many things and mini pcnl became the buzzword then uh, from the mini pcnl it came the ultra mini perk then the micro perk super perk super mini perk extra mini perk micro mini perk and everybody came with their own idea their own modification and gave the name and that is how mini uh, so many uh, mini perks uh, came in picture this paper reviewed all the uh, so called uh, non invasive or minimal invasive pcnls of mini pcnl mit ultra mini micro mini so many other things and what they found is that instead of uh, having confusion about this uh, uh, newer and different terminologies it is better to describe the uh, tract size in the form of uh, xl which is more than 25 l which is 20 to 25 m which is 15 to 20 s which is uh, 10 to 15 like that if you describe it it will be better to understand uh, to the audience to the uh, reader that what tract size you are actually referring to instead of describing as ultra mini or extra mini or super mini and things like that which is actually a good idea to do that now 
uh, apart from the mini PCNL now, then came the ultra mini PCNL, which has the sheath of a 11 French uh, sheath and the telescope of a three French. Now, if you see here, the design is a little bit different. There is a tracks, there is a sheath inside the track. From that, you put the, uh, give the saline push so that it creates the whirlpool effect. And that is how the fragments are uh, driven out. They come out. That is what the, uh, is the proposed benefit of uh, the ultra mini PCNL. Stores has come out with MIPS, which is uh, 11 oblique 12 size, and XS, which is 8.5 and 9.5 size, which has got 7.5 nephroscope, which is a rigid, and therefore it is quite sturdy. And it has got two XS, has the, this telescope has the two separate channels, three frames for irrigation, two frames for instrument, and therefore even if you put a laser, the, uh, the irrigation is not uh, compromised. Uh, that is what is the benefit. But when we see all the components of this uh, miniaturized, so-called uh, too much of miniaturizes of PCNL, the special instrument, the miniaturized instruments are required, the ultrasound guided function. The track is, the method remains same. What is more, what is a different is that the single stripe dilatation, the low pressure irrigation system, quite often with the gravity, it does not uh, go inside. Even with the miniaturized, the vacuum cleaner effect is present and the tubeless tract uh, is, is the buzzword, is the very much possible. However, if you go further down and down and down in size, there is definitely a challenges in fragmentation and the, uh, basically the retrieval. The interoperative vision definitely gets compromised. Small blood can hamper your vision and maintaining acceptable clearance rate becomes a real challenge. The vacuum cleaner effect has been uh, shown. We don't want to waste time in understanding that. And if you do MIP excess, so go a very small size, say 8.9 and uh, uh, 9.5, you see the instrument. Instrument has really become small, 11 and 8.9. This is the heart of the instrument telescope, which is 7.5 French uh, in size. It has got a irrigation channel and it has got an instrument channel. So instrument is modified. The Basically, the treatment or the method remains same. Whether you do ultrasound guided, whether you do fluoro guided, the puncture remains uh, same. And once you puncture that, the dilatation and then uh, the nephroscopy, you uh, hear if you do too much miniaturization, uh, laser is the only way you can fragment it. You can't do lithoclast uh, fragmentation. There is no other way. And you have to have uh, the laser, high power laser will definitely be useful. And here also, if you uh, uh, fragment the stone properly, they do come out even in the smaller size uh, sheath, whether it is 8.5, 9.5, or whether it is 11, oblique 12, the fragments do come out, but the, obviously the fragment size has to be very, very uh, small uh, for, uh, for them to come out. Then came the micro PCNL, which has further gone down. So we went down in MIP excess to 8.5 oblique 9.5, and this further went down to 4.85 French size. So what essentially means is that it's a, it's a just a needle to which the three uh, part obli uh, the plastic adapter is put. On one side, you have irrigation, which has to be necessarily by the pressure irrigation. You can put a laser fiber of 200 micron, and you have a small 0.9 mm telescope, which you can insert, uh, which will go through the 16 gauge needle. This is a, just a 16 gauge needle through which everything can be done. And the biggest difference in micropore from the other uh, methods is that this is a one-step PCNL, meaning thereby you just puncture. After that, there is nothing. There is no wire, there is no dilatation, there is nothing. You just put a telescope and start breaking the stone. So this is the uh, insertion of a telescope, which is uh, 10,000 pixel. You have the uh, 200 micron fiber, and you can see here that you see under uh, vision and start breaking the stone. The, obviously, the biggest disadvantage is that there is no way the fragments can come out. So it is like RIRS, where you fragment the stone, dust the stone, and forget it. And once you ensure that everything is dusted, it is just a puncture mark which is there on the, on the body. So that is what is the micro-PCNL. 
there are many papers which are published of the micro PCNL. The question of listening to all these things from the standard to mini to ultra mini to MIP excess and to micro, how small can we go or can we go? What is the correct size? And we really, are we stretching the limit too far? So that is what is the question which we have to uh, answer. Now, MIP, it is, uh, if it is worth, then the comparison should be on these factors. Now, the, uh, whether uh, mini park, whether it is RIRS, whether ESWL, how much is the clearance rate? How much is the complication rate? And if you compare really with all these ultra mini, ultra mini modalities and with mini park, the clearance rate is almost the same. The complications rate is no different. Ancillary procedure required is actually more in MIP access. Hospital stay, no way difference. Analgesic requirement is not different. And cost eff effectiveness, if you have to see, then if you go smaller and smaller, the instruments wear and tear is more. They are more fragile. And therefore, wear and tear definitely is more. There are some problems if are actually more, if you go more and more miniaturization, pelvic pressure definitely will rise. Retrieval of fragment is a big concern. It is a challenge. In micro PCNL, it is not possible. In MIP access, it is really very difficult and you have to make efforts to retrieve those fragments. And in the process, the operating time is prolonged. And because of the too delicate instrument, the wear and tear is more. And therefore, in the randomized trials, which we have to see, comparing MIP or uh, mini park with ultra mini park, we have done comparison of this. And what we found is that there is no remarkable benefit in going small. If all parameters are into, taken into consideration, the, as of today, the mini park has many advantages because it has got uh, definitely the advantages over standard mini PCNL. It has no disadvantage of uh, going so small. And therefore, mini park uh, from standard MIPM, uh, the most concerns are overcome. The ultra mini PCNL MIP access, it is not yet proved that there are any advantages. And therefore, even though we today think that MIPM, that is standard mini PCNL, is the way to go, further going down is, uh, has not much uh, proved uh, benefits. The time definitely will tell in several randomized trials what exactly is the situation. And of course, at the end, before we conclude, we need to understand that with the advent of disposable flexible retroscopy, with the better and better laser machines, with the MOSIS technology, with thulium laser, laser fiber, thulium fiber laser, disintegration with the laser is very fast, very effective, and you can actually convert this stone into a dust. And therefore, in the years to come, even though as of today, mini park is standard, the RR, RIRS is likely to pose a biggest challenge to uh, mini PCNL. That is what I have to tell about the realistic audit and giving the overview of mini PCNL. Thank you very much and over to you, Dr. Park.